we're at the burn that we're we're concerned about. Why the very reason we've, we've got a wee micro uh, incubator or hatchery running, and you can see if you look into the bed of the burn, there's a huge amount of granite sand deposited on the bed. It's typical of this area, but there's an increased amount of se sediment moving in this burn. And we think that's due to forestry operations. The, the, the felling operation that's happened 10 years ago released a lot of sediment, we're told. And since then, this burn, which used to be really an important spawning burn, it's now gone downhill so much that we felt that we had to intervene. But you can see it's, it's deep. It's deep, so I'll get in and let you see it. It's deep, deep sediment. I'm just sinking down. And it doesn't help when you're in the wrong waders. Put these on, these are Struan's waders. Brought the wrong waders and I feel I'm trussed up a wee kinda of overweight I think. Um, but anyway, hey, one of the things here is this this sand and it's deep. It's very deep and you can see it coming up the clouds. And that smothers the spawning and I'm sure that if we could find a way to address this um, the forestry operations and the way they work around the ditches and stuff, maybe block ditches, whatever. But we need to try and do something. Well, you see that we don't just jump in and do things um, because we've got an idea. We, we look at all the evidence and we've got catch records going back to pre-1900. Pre uh, and we, we have uh, had a good look at these from 1946 onwards. Probably only about a week old, but less than a week old. They just started hatching a week ago, so you can see also here in the side egg here. You can see the eyes very clearly developed. That that these eggs are going to hatch any day now. Very strange indeed. So what we're doing is we're just getting a few albums out at a time, putting them into our, our uh, container here and photograph them and that lets us get an accurate count on them later on, see how many we put out and exactly into what locations in the burn. So out here now, I you plant know, out the albums that we've got in the in little container here and as you can see I'm surrounded by coniferous forestry which is reckoned to be one of the big the big impacts in the burn we're working on today. Hence hence the reason for the hatchery slash sort of incubator we've been working with. And anyway, so we had a bit of sap in the in the incubator and the advice we've been given is to get these out as soon as possible and that reduces the liability, um, reduces the chance of losing any more albums due to that. So we'll give you a look at see what we're putting out. So you can see here we've got a fuck up a few hundreds. We're just going downstream to put some further down as well. And we'll stock these out at fairly low density and give them all the chance they've got in this burn. It's a little shelter spot for them to drop into. But we're always concerned when it gets to intervention, stocking, hatchery work. And the reason we're concerned is because things go wrong. Uh, so it's disappointing for us when we come up here today and we're, we're doing the best we can for this wee burn uh, and system here. Trying to rear a few eggs to boost a population that is struggling at the moment because the habitat is not in good condition. We've come up here today, there's a fungal infection affecting 45 out there, a couple of thousand eggs in Alvin we've got in here. But in this circumstance, it was meant to be so simple, so easy, and with the very least intervention possible. And we're now faced with a situation, what do we do? I think that's the reality of hatchery. There's absolutely no certainty. Everyone thinks it's 
the, the panacea for, for fish problems. It's not, it really isn't. Uh, and it, it's frustrating to us, we've put an awful lot of effort into this over the winter. We don't see this as a, a sustainable solution really, short term to try and help, but It's a simple, it's a micro hatchery, it's, a, it's just really an incubator, there's a feed from the burn and an overflow back to the burn and it's designed that eventually the, the alvins when they reach the swim up stage they'll just feed back to the burn themselves. Uh, hit like, subscribe um, and hit the alerts button too and you'll, you'll see other uh, uh, videos. videos. <laughs> when we publish them. Um, we planned to do this much more often than we've done. Uh, I think last year we said we were going to try and do it monthly. Uh, it's very difficult for us because we've got an awful lot of other work in as well. Um, but we will try and do regular updates of our work and all the things we get involved with throughout the year. So hit like, subscribe and the notifications bell too. Thanks.